Hi Flosstube, it's the Calculated Stitcher. This is my second video that I'm filming today. I did one earlier that was my 12th day of Christmas, my belated 12th day of Christmas video for my giveaway. And now, and I showed a few stitching gifts that I received over Christmas and my Christmas day start. And then I wanted to do a separate video now on my uh, whips that I have accumulated since I began stitching, which was December 3rd of 2018. So just a little over a year now. Uh, I did in between go to my mom's and we did a little working on a quilt that we're doing. And then we went and ate. Um, we have a little cafe in town. It closes at nine, which means I have two hours before my kids come home because they're both working there tonight. And my husband has gone to his mother's to help her around her house for a few days. So I have the house to myself. So this is going to be my whip video. I also have out um, some of my projects that I have kitted over the last year that I would like to start. But with all the whips that I have going, I don't know if I will actually start any of them. But I do have them kitted up. I really enjoy these kind of videos. If this isn't your thing, you don't have to watch it. It's okay. I just like to see what other people are working on and their progress. And it gives me some inspiration. And um, I just feel like I have company when I'm watching y'all on FlossTube. So um, I will get started then. First, I do want to do my giveaways. I did my um, first through fifth day of Christmas giveaway. And those have all been mailed out. First time I ever did international shipping. I felt like such an adult. Today, I'm going to do 6 through 11 since I just posted the 12th day of Christmas. That one I will draw for later uh, this week, probably Tuesday or so. Um, if I decide to do a separate video for my uh, kitted up projects and what I plan on doing um, for this coming year. Anyway, so first I want to talk about my puppy sitting here. I'm sitting on the floor. I'm in my bedroom right now, um, sitting on the floor. So he's like all wiggling around down here. First thing I want to do is to announce the winners of the giveaways. So I did last time for the first five days, I let my students be my random number generators. But since um, school's not in session, I just did a random num number generator on my phone. So here are my winners. And this is the sixth day was Lottie Dawes Fractor Flowers. This is the sixth day of Christmas. And my winner is Carla Burgoon, maybe, B-U-R-G-O-O-N. And again, I will run my um, email down here because I still, I'm not sure exactly how to get it into the description box, but one day um, I'll ask my IT person at school maybe. So Carla Burgoon, this is yours. If you'll just email me with your uh, physical address, I will get it mailed out tomorrow if I hear from you, depending on when I get this loaded up. <laughs> uh, the seventh day was Summer at Holly Berry Farm by Stacy Nash Primitives. All of these are just ones that I bought two of, so I was giving them away. This one, the winner is Donna Barker. So Donna Barker, if you will just email me at that email address and send me your physical address, I will ship it out to you as soon as I hear from you. Then day eight was the eighth day of Christmas was Susanna Spear. I'm looking at my list. Susanna Spear, Spire. I'm not sure how you say this one. It's Queenstown Sampling Designs. And again, I love this one. I saw this one on Teresa Vinette's video and really, really like this one. There's something about that lady right here carrying her little pails that I just think is the sweetest thing. And a big red house, there's nothing, can't go wrong with a big red house. So the winner is Kelly Hale. And if you'll just send me a message at my email address with your physical address, I'll send that out. 
Then the ninth day of Christmas was Button Up by the Prairie Schooler. And um, I did finish this one. I want to fully finish them this week. I have some finishing that I would like to get done. This one's called Button Up. It is not the cardstock copy. It's just the paper copy. I bought two of. Um, I was part of my very first sale was this one uh, with, um, or was it the American flag? It does not matter. Last December, I, I joined the sale for this Misty Purcell was having and I finished it. I'm going to finish them into ornaments. I did them individually. I showed them on a previous video instead of as one. And the winner of this is Sadie Lady Dubois. So congratulations. If you'll just send me a message with your physical address, then I will, or your mailing address, I will send that out to you. Then the 10th day was this goodie package right here with the charm packs and the little tin and the silicone pad and the little mints I found at our quilt shop, which I thought went really cute with the quilting package. That was 10th day and the winner is Kim Patterson. Congratulations, Kim. Just send me a message on my email address and I'll send that right out. And then the 11th day, because I can't do the 12th because it's loading right now while I'm talking, is by the sampler company and it's the round birth sampler. And the winner of this one is Darlene Bumgardner. Congratulations, Darlene. If you'll just send me a message with your mailing address, I will send that out. So those are all my winners for the through the 11th day and as soon as I hear from you I will get those in the mail right away so those are my winners congratulations and thank y'all for watching I really appreciate it and subscribing and saying all the kind things that you do um, it means a lot to me so whip parade I'm very excited it was it was really great to get them all out and look at them the only thing that did happen was I was pulling everything out I didn't tell him why I just told my husband that I was organizing them and he looked around he goes uh how much did all this cost and I started thinking it's probably a lot of money that I spent in a year hold on I'm sitting on the floor and my hip um but so my goal this year is I don't want to buy any charts here are my exceptions I can buy charts from Misty Purcell I can buy, like her charts, I can buy charts from Teresa Vanette, her charts, and then the Hands Across the Sea samplers, which I already ordered her newest one. Have y'all seen it? It is absolutely beautiful. I also signed up for the online workshop, which I'm really excited. Um, in fact, she had like a sneak peek kind of at, uh, because it's like stitching a sampler reversibly which I don't know if I would ever actually do that. And if I did, it would be a long time from now since I'm a relatively newer stitcher. But um, it was called a double back stitch, maybe? But it's on her YouTube and it's only out for a few days, but it's part of the workshop. So I thought that was really interesting. Sorry, my dog is barking at who knows what, a shadow or something. So anyway, back to what I was saying. So. Um, but that's my goal is the rest of the year is it's for me to spend money just on and I even have linen that I've built up now but the the floss especially I, I'm, I'll let myself buy floss but other than that I have so much to stitch I can't imagine people who've been doing this for like 20 years they must have I can't even imagine how much they have maybe they maybe I just have a lot I don't know anyway so I'm gonna go through my whips from the last year and this is from the workshop that I went to at the Silver Needle Teresa Vinette was the um, guest lecturer teacher I guess I have already completed this and shown it in a previous video it's gonna go inside my book which is one of the things I want to finish today uh, not this, today this week I have one more week off of school then this is like a, it holds your pencil so you're, it doesn't make markings if you have it inside your project bag. 
Um, I did finish that and I fully finished that one. So all I have left is this piece right here, which is like the pin cushion. And it's made with a rice stitch. And I have not worked on this since the workshop. But there are my rice stitches. They really are pretty. So, um, this one, I don't, th I mean, it shouldn't take, okay, I'm a slow stitcher, so it's all going to take a while. But compared to some of the other things that I started, this one won't take as long. So, that's one of mine. Then, while at the silver, silver needle, I love samplers, and you're going to see that when I go through all of these uh, whips. And my kitted up things, I have a lot of samplers. I'm just drawn to them and I'm not sure what it is. If it's the history, thinking about the little girl, I'm not really sure what it is, but I do love samplers. And this is Jane Pattison and it's by Shakespeare peddler, Teresa Vinette. And it is so pretty. And this one she charted in wool, which is what I did mine on. So this, is my teeny tiny start now this is my start when i was at the silver needle at in oklahoma with my mom at the workshop with teresa vinette i wanted to start this this um, sampler there because she was the teacher and it just meant something to me so this is the first time i've stitched with wools they stitch beautifully i don't see any difference and here's the thing you know people talk about oh i don't like this this floss or Ooh, silks. I really like the way they stitch. Well, I don't know if it's because I don't know what I'm doing, but I can't tell a difference between any of them. DMC, silk, wool, all of it seems to be stitching the same. So maybe I don't know what I'm supposed to be looking for um, and what makes a floss good and what makes a floss bad. But so far, I like them all. And then these are all of the, and I showed these in a previous video. These are all of the pretty wool floss colors. Aren't those just beautiful? So that is my Jane Pattison, right? Jane Pattison. So I do hope to work on her. I hope to work on all of these. The one that I really would like to have my goal, I do have a goal here for this one, is my um, Jenny Bean for the parlor. And it's a band sampler, again, by Teresa Vinette. And it has, I think, six parts out right now. And I've done, this is the first part, which is the alphabet, and I've done that one. Then the next one was Adam and Eve. I think my face is throwing it off. Let's try to see. I've done that one. This is the one on which I'm working now, which is Noah's Ark. And I'll show it in a second. Then this is the fourth part, which is the Good Shepherd. The fifth part is the verse. And the sixth part is the forest. And when I was working on this one, let me focus it again. Um, at I did take this one to the workshop at the Silver Needle. And um, when I pulled it out, Teresa said that she was hoping to have the rest of the parts. And I think there are eight or nine parts, maybe total. I think she said there's a. a um, I know there's like a town one. I know there's two or three more. I'm not really sure, but um, she was hoping to have them completed by market, which would be great. So I, theoretically, this is the one that I would like to put the most time into because I would like to have all of my parts done by market, which I don't really see that happening, but I, I can, I can set my goals and that's going to be one of my goals. But um, when I didn't show this, well, I showed it in one of the videos that I deleted and didn't get to show but um when i was at the workshop at the silver needle teresa vinette stitched a t can you see that t that's a teresa vinette t i have a picture of her stitching that t isn't that wonderful <laughs> so anyway means a lot to me so this is how much i have finished so far this is, there's the alphabet and Adam and Eve. And I'm not a big Adam and Eve person, but I like these Adam and Eve. They, they don't bother me. 
And then that's as far as I've gotten on Nova's Ark. I have not put this back into the scroll rod, scroll frame, since I've been back from the silver needle. So this one, I, I need to get it back in there so I can get to work on it because I really do want that finished. So that's another whip. And it's on the called for fabric, um, I think it's Wren, 36 count Wren. I ordered it from Teresa's um, shop, which is kittenstitcher.com. And if you just contact her, she will, she'll sell that size to you. I've bought a couple of pieces from her for other band samplers that I have kitted up. And so she's, she's really great about that. So, okay. On to the next one. Now, this one I started, and this one is Priscilla's Pocket, I think. Priscilla's Pocket Stoneware Pill Pin Pillows 2. And I love blue and white, and so these really spoke to me. And I bought the color that it was called for, but it's very variegated, and it variegates into purple. And I'm just not sure if I like it. But, anyway... This one is finished, I think. It may have one more thing of leaves to do, but it's finished. But I would like to make all of them eventually, but I'm not in a hurry to make them. That's this one right there. That one right there. So, and this one's on 36 Count Legacy. Okay, and my next one, I hope these don't fall down because we're going to have a problem if we do. The next one is Scattered Seed Samplers Spring Gathering. I don't have a lot of Easter stuff because I don't care for pastel colors in decorating very much. My house is very dark. I like the dark, uh, darker colors. So I like this one. It's not super, super pale. Um, I don't participate in Stitch Mania because I am a high school teacher and May is a crazy month in high school. So I think just in education in general. So I don't, I know I will not have time to stitch every day in May. And someone had mentioned monogamous May and I thought, oh, that's a great idea. So I may do monogamous May because I do, um, I called it, what did I call it? Jubilant June. And I posted on Instagram this last year. And I did a new start every day. So this was one of my starts for Jubilant June, which is my Stitch Mania, but it just occurs in June. And I didn't get a whole lot done. This one I did on 35 count straw linen. And I only got these little, see those little eggs right there? That's all I got done. So, like I said, it was just to have a start. So... I did. I had the start. <laughs> Just wasn't a very big start. So then, and I haven't worked on it since. And the next one is my Lizzie Kate Land that I love. And this one I really like. And this one I just did on a scrap piece of linen. I don't even know what it is. But it's the called for colors. And really, I don't have, I just have like all of this stuff down here, which comes out to be quite a bit when you start looking at it because they're so full. It's a lot of stitches. But yet again, and a little bit on top of the flag. Um, but closer than I was before. So that's a better start than on some of these that I have. So then my next one, now I showed this one recently because I had a mishap. And this one is Misty Purcell's A Bluebird Salute. I do love anything patriotic. Um, I'm not a big uh, Halloween person. It's not like I'm against it. I just, Halloween was never my thing. When our kids were little, I made all of their costumes and we would did the trick-or-treating and I decorated. But now I don't really decorate for Halloween. I just decorate for fall. And that just carries me through Thanksgiving. So I just do it all lumped together. But I could stitch and decorate for patriotic themes uh, all year long. I do love patriotic. So this one was really cute. And 
here. I'm almost finished. All I have left is this right here and two little things in the corner. But here's the thing. I showed this a long time ago. I was getting my hair dyed and um, I decided to go darker. And so I, she put me under the dryer and I put my reading glasses on because I'm at the age where I have to have magnifiers to read and um, didn't think about it when it was time for me to go rinse my hair took my glasses off and threw them in my bag that's hair dye right there and a little bit right there now it's also over here but that doesn't matter but yeah right there right in the middle so I have to figure out something my eyes are itchy I'm sorry we have cedar is crazy cedar and mold is crazy and so all day my eyes have been itching runny my nose has been running sneezing coughing so if I do any of that stuff I'm sorry it's just crazy crazy allergies here in Texas so I'm trying to decide what I can put or stitch over this to cover that up or maybe I'll just like you know do a tree savinette and dye it all splotchy of something I don't know but it's very close to being finished and there's no way that I'm going to restitch this I still have one more like little firework thing right here too but I mean that's really close I love this one it really it's one of my favorite pieces so I really would like to figure out a way to um, salvage it then my next whip is Threadworks Primitive Beggars Fourth again love love patriotic so i stitched mine on 36 count meadow rue linen and this is my start and all of these were started in jubilant june unless i tell you otherwise most of these are jubilant juice starts this one is one of the first things that i started because i am a high school math teacher this is the sampler company, and it is the multiplication sampler. Let's see if it'll focus. And it has a cute little school scene down here, and then the multiplication chart, which I love. I love, love, love this. And then this one is on, let's see, does it say? Did I save it anywhere? It's on some kind of 28 count because I'm doing it over one. So this is my first foray into the over one realm, if you will. Let me zoom, focus it. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's just not going to focus. There we go. So and it's with variegated and I think it's DMC 115. I mean, oh, wow, that's all sorts of blurry. Yeah, okay. Uh, yes, DMC 115. So it's a variegated DMC. So that was my first one over one. Then the next start is the Buzzy String. Now, earlier, it was focusing just beautifully. I'm just going to have to tap my screen each time, maybe. Maybe if I take up the whole screen. Buzzy string. There we go. Now, I know most of y'all have seen all of these before because I'm late to the party. But um, I really prefer, I feel very anxious and stressed sometimes when I'm in a sal because I feel like everybody, you know, finishes in two days. Boom, look, there's this big sampler finished, I feel like. But, um... So I don't mind stitching it later than everybody else. It's kind of like I savor it a little bit and then do it. Although I am going to join another sal soon. So, But this is all I got started on this one because I wasn't so sure about this color. And now I've just been questioning uh, if I just want to start it all over. But it was just a tiny start. This is a jubilant June start also. And it was just on a piece of something that I coffee teed died so i'm sure it was just a 28 count i would guess now i have a couple of these 
I've tried to stitch on Ada and I'm not good at Ada. I have a hard time. It's like stiff and it, I'm not sure what it is. And I don't, I, sometimes the stitches just look too big. I started this in Jubilant June and I do love Van Gogh, Van Gogh, but um, this is probably my favorite painting of his because I feel like it's moving. I don't, something about it speaks to me. So I really do enjoy this piece and I would like to stitch it. So I bought, it's a kit and it came with Ada. And look how big those stitches look. Don't those stitches just look huge to you? So I'm thinking there's a couple of these that I bought as a kit that's on Ada. And I'm really not that far into it. I mean, I only have that many stitches. I think I may change and put this on linen. Is it, can somebody tell me, Is will it look the same or... Is it because Ada is even? Does this need to be on something even like that? I, I don't know. Because I think it's, I guess it's full coverage. So, I don't know. Give me your opinion on that. Because I think I would really like to restart it on something that's not, maybe it's just because it's so big. I was, it's 14 counts. Maybe if I did it on 18 count, maybe I would like it better. So, tell me what you think. All right, my next whip is, I bought this from Teresa of the Nets shop, and I own all of these. It's her little basket full, baskets of, this one's red, white, and blue. And this was my start during jubilant June. And it has these little satin stitches right here in the center. I don't know if you can tell. It's really hard to see. Here we go. So that was my start. And so it was on, it was a kit. So it was the, the floss and the linen that she sent. So I have that. My next one, I really like this one. But you know, you put all these away and then you forget you have them. <laughs> so I gotta get better at looking. This one is Stacy Nash Primitives Summer Pomegranate Needle Book in Pink Heap. And I think this one came out at market this year. I'm not really sure, but I know the first time, let me cover up my face. The first time I saw it, I absolutely loved it. And I love this. If you look on the back, Look at the back. You stitch the back too. Can you see that? I at first I thought it was fabric until um, somebody did a walkthrough at Market, and I think it was Teresa Vinette, and she showed that it was actually the back was actually stitched. So I started this on 36 count Havana, which I think is what it's called for, and this was my teeny tiny start in jubilant June. I do love this color though. It really is just beautiful all right so then my next one and this one i kind of go back and forth because again i'm not a halloween person so i may end up giving this away um i i have the box i have all of the stuff i have the paint i have the wax i have all the floss but i just and i'm thinking maybe if i put here something about fall or something I don't know, but I just know I love this piece whenever I see it stitched. And, but I would like to be able to keep it up past Halloween. Maybe that's it. Maybe I'm a lazy decorator and I just don't, I want something that's going to last longer. Um, so I'm doing mine on 30 count tin roof, which I would guess is probably what is called for because this is one of my first, these are my first things I started stitching on. So I didn't, you know, ever branch out. And I have a little kitty cat right here. So that's for this block right here. Right there. So cute. So I have that one. Then my next one. I make um, project bags. Words are not coming to me. 
And so um, I have a stack of them that I still, I just need to finish up. So all of my projects can have project bags. But so this is my project bag for this piece. All of mine are the vinyl front zipper bags. So this one is Birds of a Feather, my betrothed sampler. And I love her. Look at her teeny tiny little waist. Wouldn't that be nice? So this one I am doing on 32 count sand Belfast linen and I just have this teeny tiny little start which is the border and my needle minder is Yorkie like my little one who's sleeping over there my daughter's little one technically so this is one side of the border so that's how long it is so there's that one. Oh, the next one I've shown this in two videos, but I think it's both of the videos that I have deleted. Excuse me as I have to reach over here to get it. This one is in this bag. This is the bag I made. And I've quilted them. You can see. I practiced my free motion quilting on my bags. So that's this bag. And this one is going to be, if you watch Lisha, the Southern Ladybug. She is just the cutest thing ever. And I love her accent. Um, I love how she can crochet. I think that's just amazing. And I've bought uh, some of her scissor fobs before. She's just a very creative person. And so I, she was going to do this project. And it's these Mill Hill. It's the um, like little towns, I guess. Better check the time. And so she was going to do five. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to be like Lisha. And she loves sparkly. And I am not a sparkly bead chronic person at all. Like, I, well, I've never used it before. This is my first time I've tried. And so this is the one that I began with, with which I began, excuse my grammar. And it's the firehouse. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do this. So we started it at the same time. I'm trying to get all my stuff back together. And... I don't think I brought, I'm looking for something to put behind it. Okay, let me pull this pattern out. Here we go. So this was my start. Do you know she has already finished this? Finished it, FFO'd it, and given it to her mother. She's five of them already. This is my first one. Well, let me tell you, I started, and I started these beads and I put it away. The door is the only thing that has beads. And I learned that I don't think I know how to bead correctly. So I do want to, because there are some other projects I have that I'll show you in a little bit that are on another video probably that call for beads. And so I need to get better at beading in order to do these projects. And I do think they're beautiful. I just don't know what I'm doing but I'm sure there's a YouTube video out there somewhere there's a YouTube video out there for everything I think so let me reach over here so my next one is hometown Christmas Abby Rose designs and I do like her design she also lives in Texas just like I do which I think is great and this one I did on Oaken it's 32 count and I have two sides. I can get, if I can hold it, maybe if I hold it upside down. Uh, I have two sides of the border, one side and the top. That's actually a top. I'm holding it this way so you can see it all. So I love, I love Oaken. Oaken is a beautiful, beautiful fabric. Okay. And then next whip is indigo lane and it's in this bag that i made it has poppies on it and it's indigo lane Ooh. i want to make this also isn't that pretty let me show you the back right there so, and it's by Brenda Gervais, and this was a jubilant June, and it's when we were traveling one day, and so all I got were those little, 
probably 10 stitches maybe. That was my start. And it is on 36 count summer khaki. Then, I love this bag. This bag is my peacock bag. And I practice my feathers. I was practicing feathers on that one. This one is Just Stitching Along, Miss Lucy Calcutt, 1825. <gasps> Just seeing it makes my heart go pitter-patter. Oh, look at that. Look at that house. It even has two deer for my husband. He loves deer. Oh, just love everything about it. This one I actually started in the middle and I don't normally. This is on 40 count antique cotton. And this is the center motif. It's on 40 count. And this is when I started discovering that I like 40 count. The um, other counts, the stitches look so big and I don't like them for my for my projects. Um, I just would rather stitch on something where the stitches are smaller. I don't know why, it's just the way I like it. All right, next project. This is my bag. And it is Brick House Sampler. It's also by Brenda Gervais. These I was inspired to do because of Jen at Jen just Jen's Stitching Niche. Now, here's another one. Well, no, this one's not as bad. It's the other house. I still think those stitches look awfully big. And I didn't iron all of these because I knew it was going to take forever and I didn't have a lot of time. So that was my little tiny start on that one. Then my next whip is this bag. And then these pretty little birds it is Plum Street Crowned Bird Sampler. I do like Plum Street and I do like anything with a big house. I keep all my stuff together and this is on oh 40 count summer khaki <coughs> again jubilant June start so it was just a little start Isn't that pretty though see I like those little stitches I just I don't know why okay every time I move my puppy looks at me like oh are we going somewhere <laughs> Okay, so the next one is this bag that I made. I like this one. These are my colors. So, they are shutting down um, the clinic that where is where I work at my second job. <coughs> Excuse me one second. I have to get a drink. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm, my daughter said, why don't you open an Etsy shop and sell project bags? So I may try that. I just don't know if mine are good enough to sell. Anyway, we'll see. Uh, I have to find something. I live in a very, very small town of about 300 people. And so there's not a lot of business opportunities. There's really nowhere to work. There's a grocery store that I do fill in when people need someone to fill in, but really I can only do that on Saturdays and then I can work during the summer, but because I teach school, otherwise I'd have to drive in. By the time you do that, then it's, you know, late and you've spent so much on gas and anyway, so I'm trying to figure out another, something else I could do to help supplement our income because we have three kids in college. But so this one is, um, Chessie and me, ooh, Chessie and me. Martha Davies sampler. Look at this, red house. It's the red house. Oh. See, when looking at all these just makes me want to stitch them all right now. Can't do it, but it makes me want to. Then this is all I got was just two letters. Well, one letter and half a letter. So that was my progress in jubilant June. 
the next one, this is one that I think I may change also, kind of like my Van Gogh piece. This one, my dad, his combine used to be an international harvester, which is what the IH is. So this one I thought was really cute. So I made that one thinking of my father. This is the sampler company. And it's the Plymouth sampler. And I started this one on, what is this one? 28 counts. All right, this is 28 counts. And I have now discovered if I do 28 count, I wanna do it over one because these stitches I think are huge and maybe it's just me. So these are my stitches. Push the button. Oh, let me try it again because I would like to have your opinion on this. If anybody's still even watching. Do those stitches just look huge to you? This is the house, the blue house. What I do with the blue house? <laughs> I've lost my picture. Hold on. Hmm. How did she lose it, Jennifer? Oh, it's right here. Oh, oh and I'm blurry as I'll get out. Sorry about that. Um, this is the the big blue house right here. Well, if that's how big the house is, holy moly, that thing's just gonna be massive so i'm thinking of starting this over one on one over one what do you think i do like 28 count one over one what do you think i should do do you think these look too big i just think they look i don't know maybe it's just me so that one is one that i don't want to work on until i have decided exactly how i want to go about there's a couple that are like that that i'm thinking that the stitches look too big for me. And if I don't enjoy it and I don't want to hang it up in my house, then there's no reason to stitch it. And I love the chart. I just don't like the size that I'm stitching, maybe. Um, this one is in this bag, which I thought was really cute. So I made that bag for this one, Nature's Alphabet, Elizabeth's Design. Nature's alphabet. I love things with alphabets on them like this. And I'm doing this one in 40 count lamb's wool. I had to put something behind it. And again, it was a jubilant June start, so all I did was get a few stitches in. And that's all I got, was the beginning of one little box. This one, ooh, I love this project. Um, this is the bag that I put it in bag that I made and it is summer in Baltimore I love this look at that by Brenda Gervais Brenda Gervais is just fabulous and I did this this one I'm doing on a 40 count raw Newcastle and this is all I have so far let me tell you, um, I have learned that 40 and 46 count are not easy to stitch in a car <laughs> because we travel a lot. My husband's a coach and I still have one son who is in high school and plays a lot of sports. And so we travel a lot, travel on a bus because my husband drives the bus and I'm the female chaperone and, um, I can hear my puppy, uh, and then we travel a lot um, to go to games that are not on a bus when he's not coaching to go watch my son. And so, but I've learned that 40 and 46 count, very difficult. I was working on my Christmas start on the way to church today in the car. And we have very windy, hilly roads. And um, it's, it's not conducive to doing that. This is another one. I think this is another one that I think I may need to change. This is, um, again, it's the same uh, fabric that I showed earlier, but just on the back. One's the front, one's the back. This one is Hoity Toity um, from Long Dog Samplers, right? I do like, I love this. 
Isn't that beautiful? The colors are just amazing. And these cardinals, and look at the, oh, I love the colors. This is just beautiful. But look how big the stitches look. And again, it's on 28 count. Don't those look, and these are, I have these like this because I was counting. Every 10th one, I, they're all going to be crossed eventually. But don't you think those stitches just look huge? So I'm thinking again, maybe I should rip this out and, I don't know, do over one. So these I'm all waiting until I, I have decided if I'm going to change those to over one. This is another one. I can't do this on the what it came with, but this is my bag. We have lots of hummingbirds where I live. And so, and then tape measures on the back. I thought those were pretty. This one was a kit. It's a dimensions kit. I love this. It looks like a pattern. Uh, my mother taught me to sew when I was seven. I had a sewing machine ever since then. I think I have 52 now. I collect them and I thought one segment maybe I could start showing you. They're all uh, vintage and antiques. I have one new sewing machine, but the rest, the besides that one, the rest, and that's what I do my free motion quilting on. The newest one I have would be like from 63. And then I have all the way back to 1878 or 79. I'd have to look at it again. She's a treadle machine, so... Anyway, so I really, um, patterns, I've been buying patterns my whole life. I started off making clothing. I made clothes for my dolls and my Barbies and eventually made clothes for my children, which got me into quilting when I had children to make quilts for them. And so I really, and I love vintage looking patterns. So this really spoke to me. But then when I got it, it's Ada. And I can't, I have a hard time. It's very like crunchy and even like the hands-on design, the chalk, chalk full series, it comes with Ada from the Fat Quarter Shop. And I just have the hardest time stitching on it. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time, but see how big these stitches are. And I don't think I'm going to enjoy it. And I don't, I don't want to make it and then not like it. But now that I'm looking at it now, I kind of like it. I don't know. What do you think? Should I put this on a smaller count? This is on, let me see. Maybe if I put my glasses on, I could probably see better. Oh, it's 14 count. See, maybe that's it. Maybe if I had 18 count Ada, it wouldn't bother me as much. I'm not sure. So again, that's another one. I don't want to start working on it until I decide if I want to change it or not, because I don't want to spend so much time working on something and then not like the end result. The next one is this is my bag that it's in. Isn't that cute? And it is um, MTV Vermilion Peacock Drum and Smalls. Now theirs is in red, which I do love red, but for some reason with the peacocks, I thought it would be really pretty to make the blue one. So, and I am using Gloriana Silk Vintage Teal. Oh yeah, isn't that pretty? So that's the color I'm using. And I'm doing the drum because I really would like to make a drum. And I'm stitching mine on 32 count macchiato by from Misty Purcell at Luminous Fiber Arts. And I'm telling you, if you have never stitched on her linen, it is, it is the nicest linen. I used to be a big lakeside, and I do like lakeside linen. It's it's my second favorite, but her linen is my favorite. Um, if I if if I can get to her website fast enough to get it, because once she posts it, it's gone. But this is my progress so far on my drum. See, seeing this makes me really want to be stitching it. And that's my progress so far on my drum. I do love that. Got to switch again. Remember when you were little and you could just sit Indian style forever? <sighs> Get to that half a century mark. I'm almost there. I'm very excited. Okay, 
So my next one is in this bag, which you saw was the back of a bag before, and now it's the inside. This is Sarah Borton, and it's Hands Across the Sea. Oh, her charts, if you have never, like, seen them in person, they are amazing. She just does an amazing job. It's all color and notated, and she does, like, history. If she can find the actual little girl, she'll do a history of the little girl. If she can't, she does a history of the time in which the girl lived. I just, I like to just sit down and look at these books. So Sarah Borton, I started her. She was a start in um, Jubilant June. Look at these colors. And I, I'm doing her on 40 count Rin. That yellow and that green, oh, it is beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. So that's another one I would like to be stitching right now. Then this, this starts, you're going to really laugh because June, in June, I had only been stitching for six months. So I had not started a sampler ever. And so I decided, okay, I'm going to start a sampler for Jubilant June. Okay. First, let me show you. This is my bag that it's in. And when I started putting these together in bags, I didn't, match them like ooh Christmas to Christmas I haven't done that yet I still have a stack of probably 20 bags still over there that I need to finish making like they're in various stages of completion so this is the uh, when thou art rich and these colors look at that oh okay this is also before I had heard the term specialty stitches so I think, oh, I'm going to start this because it's beautiful. And it's the first time I actually sprung for the silks. Ooh, ah. And they are soft, very soft. I can't tell a different stitching with them. And, of course, I haven't stitched very much on this one yet. You'll see in a second. But I opened it up, and the very first stitches were specialty stitches. And they were eyelet stitches. So this little border right here, all along the top is a teeny tiny row of eyelet stitches. Okay, well, I'm going to need to put this behind here. You're going to laugh at this. I tried like two or three of them, and then I thought, I better go practice this on something else. So I have practiced since then. That, <laughs> is it even focusing? That's as far as I got. And as a newer stitcher, I said no. No, because it's not going to look right in the long run. So I only got two of those little tiny, I think it's two, of those little tiny eyelet stitches. So I feel more comfortable with the eyelet stitches now. So I feel like I can start that again because I really would like to finish that one. It is absolutely beautiful. I'm not sure if I told you, but it's on buttercream, 36 count, 36 count buttercream. Then the next one is in this bag, which was a back of another bag. And this one is Amazing Grace Little White Church, and it's from Kanicki's. And I saw this on, oh, the cute little blonde lady. Oh, I did this earlier with Brittany at Ingleside Imaginarium, and I had to write it underneath the Yankee Creek Stitcher. There we go. She is actually the very first floss tuber that I found. So, um, and she led me to Misty Purcell, and then I just went down a rabbit hole from there. So, Kanicki's, you can get this online. And isn't that a beautiful church? I absolutely love this scene. I love this tree too, right? there um so this was a jubilant june start and all i had is that <laughs> so it's on amazing grace it's the lyrics it's like the it looks like sheet music to it so which is what and i got that from kanicki's also and you can get that at kanicki's i think it's kanicki's.com 
One moment. Yes, kanikis.com. K-A-N-I-K-I-S.com. And so you can see the sheet music back here. I really do like this one too. I mean, I really do like all of them or I would not have started them. I'm assuming, Jennifer. Okay. The next one is the, I think this is the second Sal that I've ever belonged to. And it too was hosted by, um, oh, names. Maybe it was five. Misty Purcell. And this was her birthday Sal. And it is American Flag Quilt Sampler by Rosewood Manor. And this was like the third thing I ever started. Okay. The first thing I started was on black. And the third thing that I started has partial stitches. Could I have picked a more difficult choice for my first ones, which is fine. I love this one. I really love this one. In fact, I really, I want to set goals for finishing parts of them. Um, I really wanted to have this finished by the end of the year, but this year teaching two new classes, especially calculus has really kicked my patonkas. So, um, writing curriculum is taking all of my free time. So, but I'll show you how far I am right now. And this is on 40 count. I don't remember what it's called. Oh yeah, I do. 40 count platinum. Let me put this behind it so you can see. So I have, these two are fully finished. This one is partially finished. The rest of them are all outlines and I just need to fill them in. So they take a lot of time, but they, it is, it is a fun, fun stitch. I wish I had a lot of time to stitch because I really do like that one a lot. So there's that for my whip. I am almost finished. <laughs> My next whip is in this bag and it is my token of love and I want to do this for my husband and myself. Um, this summer will be our 30th anniversary so I really would like to get this done by July. So I'm going to sit down a little bit and start planning things out because I have my 24 hours of cross stitch planner all ready to go that I got bound at office. Mine is an office depot, I think. They did all of this with a clear cover and a harder back and a all of this for like $6 and something. I thought that was crazy good. So next time I'm going to insert some dividers, which I should have done before, but that's okay. So I'm going to sit down and I'm actually going to make a plan and I'm going to try not to get too upset if I can't meet my goals because I am one who, if I don't meet my goals, I get very, and we don't need that. This should not be bringing stress into my life. So anyway, so here is my progress. Oh, there it is. This is my progress so far. I just have, this is one of the sides. Isn't that beautiful? This is, I'm using Gloriana something cherry. Hold on. Black cherry. And it's on 28 count cream cashel linen. Oh, so pretty. But July is only seven months away, so that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work to get done. So there is that one. And the only other one I have over here, I'm looking to make sure. I have to reach it's further over here. Is the one I showed earlier today on my... Um, when I was doing the 12th day of Christmas giveaway. I did show it there, but I'm gonna go ahead and show it now because it is a whip. 
and my birthday start I don't even I'm not sure where my birthday birthday start it is it I don't know where my birthday start is it's one of the prairie school barnyard animal Christmas one and it's the cow I'm confused because it should have been in a bag but I've opened all my bags anyway it's in home for the holidays by blackbird designs it's called tis the season and it's this one and again misty purcell stitched it on one of her hand dyed fabrics and i was amazed because i never would have put that fabric with this project and when i saw hers it was amazing but i'm telling you if you could see this in person it is just so beautiful this is my progress um since the 25th so i've been working on it about four days but one day i didn't have time and i haven't worked on it today so i guess what did i say four days so really i've only worked on it two days so i for me this is really good progress so that's my last whip to show you so i think i'm gonna since i'm already at an hour i'm going to go ahead and do my um kitted up projects in another video at some point uh, maybe when I have more time to look through them and decide maybe what it is I want to do. But I would like to have some feedback from some of y'all because y'all have stitched longer than I. And I do appreciate all of your advice. Um, I, I can't express how much I appreciate your kind comments. And just that you are willing to watch me because I feel like I just fumble over everything I say. So... I appreciate you watching this if you got all the way through and if you were one of the winners congratulations and just get a hold of me through my email and I will get everything mailed out and I will do the other drawing later this week I'm hoping maybe Tuesday I'm gonna do maybe a 24 hours of cross stitch just for me um, because I something's always going on when when Jen at Quirks and Stitches has her 24 hours and so I just would like to myself have 24 hours of no schoolwork, no running around, don't have to go to the grocery store, clean the house. My house is all clean, everybody left, so I cleaned it all up. And so I would like to just stitch and just stitch for a whole day, and that's that's my goal. And so maybe I'll do that, uh, make a video on the day that I do that. So again, thank you so much, and I hope everybody had a great Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate. Um, I wish that y'all have a safe, very safe and wonderful new year and 2020 is going to be great. So be kind to each other and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.